Hello, my name is Mr. Raspberry, and for today's tricky question, we have got this lovely looking function. Uh, and the first instance, we are asked to find um, the derivative. So uh, it's a fraction uh, function, so we need to use the quotient rule. And here is the quotient rule as given uh, in your formula booklet. It looks like that. Um, but personally, I prefer to use u and v. Um, so we say u is the numerator function, um, which is 6x plus 2, and v is the denominator, which is 3x squared plus 5. We then need to find the derivative of each of these. So that is 6, and this here is 6x. Um, and then the formula states that we start with, well, I always just remember it, we start with V. So V is the one on the bottom, um, so that's where I'm going to start. So I write out V, which is 3x squared plus uh, 5, and then we times it by the um, U dash, or uh, the, the numerator de uh, derivative, which is 6. So times it by 6, like that, and then always a minus and then we do the other way around so we do u times by v dash so this will be um, 6x is v dash multiplied by 6x plus 2 is u and then that is all over v squared which is 3x squared plus 5 all squared okay perfect so let me just um, move that over here uh, and we can say that is f dash of x is equal to like that. Perfect. Okay, now it does say we want it as a, in its simplest form. So we're going to have to expand out the numerator here to see if we can do any cancelling. So expanding out the numerator gives us 18x squared plus 30 minus 36x squared uh, minus 12x. Uh, and then we're not going to expand out the um, the denominator because that is nice and factorized. So we don't want to um, expand out anything which is factorized. Um, okay, and the, so just to be clear, the top line is not fully factorized because there is two terms in the numerator. So that's why we're expanding out that numerator. Um, and now we can simplify this down. So we get minus 18x squared we get minus 12x and we get plus 30. Um, you could factorize that numerator, uh, but it's not going to cancel with any factors on the bottom, so I don't, there's, there's no need to do that. Um, so that is our answer uh, for free marks. Thank you very much. Let's box it up and let's move on to the next part. Okay, here we are, <clears throat> part B. Um, it says that there are two turning points. There's a maximum here at A and there's a minimum here at B. Uh, using part A, find the coordinates of A and the coordinates of B. So, of course, at maximum points and at minimum points, um, we have that the derivative is equal to zero. So we can say f dash of x is equal to zero there. Now, how do you make a fraction equal to zero? Well, you only need to make the numerator equal to zero because of course you could multiply through by that denominator and that would be just zero. So it's just the numerator which is important in making a fraction equal to zero. So I'm just gonna set the numerator equal to zero. I'm gonna divide through by minus six, which gives us three x squared positive. It gives us plus two x and it gives us minus five. Okay, because I just like to have my x squared terms positive. Okay, um, so this I'm hoping is going to factorize. Um, is it going to factorize? I think it does. I think there should be minus 1 here and then plus 5 there. I think that works. Yep. Okay, so this tells us that x is equal to minus 5 over 3 and x is equal to 1. Now we need to work out the corresponding um, y coordinates. So we need to sub in to the original function. Okay, so I need to sub into that. So let's sub in one first, because that's nice and easy. It will give us um, six plus two, so eight, 
8 over 3 plus 5 is 8, so it's 8 over 8, so y is equal to 1. Okay, great. Um, let me get the calculator out to do the other one. Okay, nice little trick that, that might save you a few seconds in an exam, which could be useful. Just when you sub in and you're subbing into something which occurs a couple of times in the, um, uh, the, the function, then just press what you're subbing in equals and then just use the answer button. So um, I'll do 6 times answer plus 2 over 3 answer squared plus 5. Might save you a few seconds. Um, so it's minus 3 over 5. So y is equal to minus 3 over 5. So I just finished that off by saying that a is clearly the maximum, which is clearly 1, 1. Uh, and you can see by the graph that it's in the positive quadrant. Um, and b is obviously the other one, which is minus 3 over 5 and minus, sorry, minus 5 over 3 and then minus 3 over 5. So that looks like the final answer for part b. So I'll box that up and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, on to part c. And it says, uh, state the coordinates of the maximum turning point of the function when, once the function has been transformed. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of what some of these transformations are. Um, f of ax is a, um, is a compression, or you could say a stretch, um, in the x-axis by... Uh, scale factor 1 over a um, and f of x plus a is a translation um, by vector um, 0 a so essentially when you have f of a x then the graph is going to compress by a factor of a, or you could call it stretching by a factor of 1 over a. And when you have um, f of x plus a, then it's going to be moving upwards or downwards, depending on whether a is positive or negative. So what is this going to lead us to? It means that the x-coordinate is going to get um, multiplied by half. And it means the y-coordinate we're going to add on 4, because it's going to move upwards 4. So, therefore, a11 one, one becomes a half and 5. Perfect. Okay. Um, and then the final part of the question... Uh, is the range. Now I know a lot of people find range tricky, so that is one of the reasons why I did this question. Um, it says, find the range of the function g of x, so a different function, but with the same equation, but ah, the difference of why it's g is that the domain is different. So that might catch people out. Um, it's just looking only at the parts where x is less than zero. So we're looking at this part of the graph and we are completely ignoring anything to the right okay so to find the range we need to find the maximum point the highest possible point which is definitely right here and that occurs when x is zero so we say when x is zero um, or in fact we could just say g of zero is equal to um, well this is clearly just going to be two over five because the x values are, are, are zero so two over five perfect um, and then we also need to find the minimum points, the lowest point it goes down to, which is here. So that's the y-coordinate of b, which we know is um, over here. That's the y-coordinate of b. Um, so that is the lowest point it goes to. So therefore, we can say the range is in between the lowest possible part, which it can equal because it can actually hit this point here. Um, g of x, we must put g of x in here because we're looking at the range, not the domain. If you put x there, you will lose a mark. Less than or equal to um, the highest point, which is 2 over 5. Now, can it equal 2 over 5? 
Well, can it actually be here? Can x be zero? Yes, it can. X is allowed to be zero, so it is allowed to hit exactly on two over five. And then finally, um, you may this is this is the final answer, but you may be asking the question, well, how do we know that over here, over this side, it doesn't suddenly just jump up um, or jump all the way down and get lower, for example? Well, what we could do is we could work out the asymptote. We could work out what these parts of the graph uh, going this way uh, tend to. Um, so we need a little bit more space to do that. But what we could do is we can find the limit of this sequence by dividing by the highest power of x of every term. So we can say g of x is equal to 6x over x squared plus 2 over x squared plus 3x squared over x squared plus 5 over x squared. We can then simplify this a bit to get 6 over x plus 2 over x squared over 3 plus 5 over x squared. And then we can see what happens when x tends to infinity, for example. So if you've got a huge number here, then this is going to give us, um, this part here will be 0. This will be 0. So you have 0 on the numerator. So it means that y, or g of x, will tend to 0. And equally, if you go in the other direction, negative infinity, then it's going to be exactly the same situation. This number on the bottom is so big that even though it's a negative number, it's still going to tend to 0. So overall, the uh, function will tend to 0, which means, if I go up to the graph, these guys here, um, along this line, uh, the line y equals 0, these are going to be asymptotes. So this graph is never going to, it's going to tend towards that asymptote on this side and on that side as well. So we're good. We're good. This is our final answer. I hope you enjoyed that. Check out my live sessions, link in the description, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.